Hey everyone, welcome to the October series where I am going through questions, four, five, six different questions from individual people that are in the WhatsApp group. So I'm gonna do this for 30 days straight, might miss a Sunday here and there. I'll do this for the entire area of October. So if you are in the WhatsApp groups, please send me a direct message. Don't go into too much detail because I've been getting a lot of messages, right? On top of all the other reassurance messages I get on a daily basis. Hey Nick, I'd like you to cover these things in five bullet points. And how to get into the WhatsApp groups by emailing Phil, coming to a one-to-one -one or a webinar, et cetera, that gives you access to our WhatsApp groups, which has probably, in my opinion, the most moderated, specific, non-reassurance, non-venting groups. We moderate it. We have a lot of people that are, that, not just me, Rob, Sam, but we also have Ellie in there, Gemma's in there, Gemma does calls, Jade's in some of the groups. Just people that are aware and, and other people who have been in there for a long time, keeping an eye on what happens uh, that doesn't happen in so many anxiety and OCD groups and forums, uh, which are completely not moderated and there's lots of reassurance. So today I have questions by an individual who me and him, uh, it's really funny. I see a lot of my, this individual is making a lot of progress to change a lot of their stuff based around how the world should be, anger, hating themselves, being mean to themselves. I thought this was a great one to kick off the month with. So I've been thinking about what you said because we had a call recently, but I don't know how to be nice to myself, okay? How does one not be a C word to themselves? You know exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so practicing unconditional self-acceptance is very difficult. There's an automatic component and a piece that you're actually doing to yourself. So if you have rigid beliefs of I don't deserve to live, I don't deserve to get nice things, I don't deserve to feel happiness, I deserve to die, you will get automatic ne negative self-talk and self-pity that will come from the core fear. The core fear and the behaviors at the top of the triangle and it kind of trickles down to get a lot of the other things that are automatic. Mm. I'm gonna start my coffee over. So, one of the best ways to practice this is by practicing unconditional other acceptance. I rarely meet people who have very, very good unconditional self-acceptance the very, very bad, unconditional, who have who have very, very bad, uh, very, very good unconditional self-acceptance, but have bad conditional other acceptance. So they're good at with themselves, but they're bad with other people. I usually don't see that. So practicing it with other people, you're gonna have to methodically go about this. Maybe a couple times a day, you look at things and you say to yourself in a non-compulsive way, but just not, not trying to change your internal state in the moment. So you can never talk to yourself, right? That's not what this video is about. I've covered this numerous times, but maybe you see an article about someone and you say, hey, look, I could see how this person have fallen into this particular problem in their life, okay? Maybe there's someone right now who's a celebrity who's been cheating on their spouse and A, you don't know anything about their lives. B, you don't have to agree with cheating. Acceptance doesn't mean agreement. Society primarily operates acceptance means agreement. So when you talk about this with people, they're gonna freak out, right? If you say to the average person, uh, let's use something um, like uh, the P. Diddy stuff, right? Do I believe that P. Diddy, his behaviors are gonna land him in jail? Of course. Do I, can I see why P. Diddy probably got to where he was, got himself into really big trouble? Yes. Uh, maybe he was not raised with a good mother and father, right? He wasn't learned uh, particular values that might be better off for society. He has definitely done good things. He's changed the music industry forever, even if he was involved in Tupac and Biggie shootings and all the other things that people say. But you could see how someone has a set belief and they come from a set culture and then you give them P. Diddy's, let's see, net worth, uh, six, uh, as a 2022 estimated, let's say 1 billion. So if you give someone an unlimited amount of money and they have these problems, you can see why they potentially got themselves into trouble with all the white parties and everything. And it's so easy to say, well, that person should have known better. No, that's not how it goes. I can easily say things to you and look at your life from a bird's eye view and say, you should have known better. You know, you're really overweight. Why are you having McDonald's for the 12th time this week? And that's a way easier thing to probably, a way less easier compulsion for some people to get into than having a billion dollars and having unlimited sexual fantasies around you. I mean, if you have a very bad belief system and you have poor frustration tolerance, this is a great place to use unconditional other acceptance and realizing you do not have to agree with anything he did because that's where everyone goes. You're, you're supporting what he did. That's not what unconditional acceptance means. So starting by looking at other people, it's gonna feel like you're faking it, you're gonna feel like a fraud. And then in time, use the gratitude and start applying that to yourself 
as you break that down over a long period of time. It's going to take time to do that because I just view it as self-reassurance and letting myself off the hook. The re this is very, very important. Remember what he said. Because I view it as self-reassurance and letting myself off the hook. That is because exactly what he just said is what most people would do with the PDD example or any other example with Ted Bundy, Gary Ridgway, the Green River Killer, Amber and Froze West, all these different examples I can use in society of people who are sociopathic serial killers. And it's so easy to look at them and say, I wouldn't do that if I was them. Bullshit. You would do it because you would be them. So it's not that simple. And people are, we've been trained as a society to only view things as acceptance means agreement. Uh, you're this race, I can't accept you. Oh, you're that religion, I can accept you. You're this political party, I can't accept you. That's not the way it is. It's actually a very immature way and surface level way of thinking. And it takes a lot more depth to think beneath the surface. And we're not trained that. It kind of goes against our natural wiring, more than likely genetically for most people. So the only reason that this individual is viewing it as self-reassurance is because they're still operating off acceptance means agreement. If they weren't, they could say, look, I've done these acts. I really don't like them. I want to get better from them. But just berating myself over and over and over again, like, let me read you something I think that I have from here. Um, okay, so like, here's an example, right? So like, people should say that they shouldn't care at all. This is the other side of the coin. People say, well, I don't care what I did. And he goes, that would be rationalization. To not care at all would be a con. And this is what I try and tell people. When you say that you don't care, the other side of this question, it's not about not caring. It's about caring what you did, but that's not going to help you be efficient if you're beating yourself and blaming yourself. So OCD wants to keep you safe. It wants to make you believe that you are the exception, that you, you cannot get better from this. But I've made plenty of mistakes in my marriage all the different stuff so I went through with the adult website addictions and all the other cheating problems I had in my life and a lot of other stuff like shortcuts and stealing, shortcuts and stealing when I was younger, getting a DUI. I realized that I could accept myself as a human being because this is the biggest problem, right? People always say, going back to the P to the example, if you accept that person's actions, that means you agree with what they did. No, it doesn't. Not even close. The only reason that we think that is because we've been told that. So it's going to make you think that you're letting yourself off the hook, but you have to ask yourself, where has that gotten you? And then the other part of the question is, everyone just has shitty standards. Have you gotten any real life examples? So again, because I view it as self-reassurance, acceptance, meaning agreement is how they're operating and laying myself off the hook. Everyone just has shitty standards. So standards are usually conditional in every way that people hold them, whether they're business goals, personal goals, marriage goals, in order to be happy, these are my standards in the relationship. It's not that the standards are particularly the problem, it's the need for the standards. It's why I usually post that thing about Warren Buffett, uh, I mean, um, uh, Charlie Munger when he passed away last year at 99, being asked numerous times in his career, what's the key to happiness? And he says to have very low expectations. Even though he has low expectations, he obviously has high ones that he doesn't attach, I need this outcome in order to be happy, or he wouldn't have died with a net worth of just, you know, south of what, $3 billion, whatever. But he really did, you could tell from a lot of his conversations, have low standards of what he needed to be happy. I've heard Ray Dalio talk about this too. And it's easy for the average person to say, easy for them to say they have $3 billion. But I do believe a lot of these people believe this deep down because of the way they communicate on on podcasts and how they talk in interviews. So if you're operating off the mind of, I can't accept the behavior because it's too close to accepting, not being able to accept myself, then you're not going to be able to see this. You're going to have to try your best, no matter how forced, because it's going to feel forced. This entire process will feel forced. So it's going to feel forced in the beginning. And again, standards aren't the problem, it's how you're holding the standards. So I have a lot of standards in my life. My goal book sits here, right here. I go over my goals every single week, all year, except for like holidays when I'm traveling. I don't bring it with me to create that balance and distance. Um, and I've had a lot of trial and error with this. My standards in my life are extremely high. They are really high for myself, in my work, in my relationship, in how I, in my career, in monetary value, in my exercise goals, but I never need to reach any of those goals in order to accept myself. I just accept myself for who I am, and if I reach those goals, that's great, and if not, that's also awesome, but you have to be aware of that. So that this is a very important way to start off this series, because you need to practice gratitude, and you have to practice it 
Am I being compulsive with it? Am I not being compulsive with it? Allow the confusion to be there. You're not going to be able to find a perfect path on gratitude and gratefulness. Am I doing this too much or too little? And vice versa. Take the risk. You could be doing it wrong and take the risk of speaking nice about certain scenarios, right? It's very easy. I'll use another example. Example. Amber and Froze, uh, uh, Amber and Fred Rose West. When you look at Amber uh, or Amber, whatever her name is, Rose West, when you look at the way she was raised, it was horrific, horrific, her background. To just say that that person has no, as they should have known better. <laughs> it's like the most surface, it's like, this is the core of the earth, you're thinking at the rim. Like there's no depth. And again, because the deeper you go into understanding why this person might've thought this way, in the, the mind of the average person, they're going, you're, you're, you're allowing them to do what they did. Oh, you're agreeing with them. Oh my God, how could you say that about them? They're pure evil. So it's not that. It's going to take time to understand there is a difference between there is no such thing as good and bad people. They do not exist. There is no such thing as a good person. There is no such thing as a bad person. Every person who you think is the most best, great human to ever live, they have more than likely done things that other people view as bad. It's all perception and belief systems and how you see it. And even the most evil, horrendous action behavior humans on earth have done things that people have loved about them. It's just the way it goes. So thank you again. Great way to start the series. Phil at OSDRecovery.com. Do not sit in silence. We can help you. Hope to hear from you soon. And as always, enjoy the rest of your day.